So Zero, a lot of people saw the video on social media. What happened this weekend? Uh, well, basically, from the video, I got in a fight, uh, an unfair fight. I uh, got jumped coming out of a, a local restaurant here. Uh, walking to the car, basically just got, got lured into an ambush. And that's, that's the short form of what happened. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I walked out, uh, got sucker punched, and then I got jumped. And that's basically the whole meat and potatoes of, of that portion of what went on, you know what I'm saying? Got, got jumped and wasn't allowed to do anything further as I got to my feet. Were you alone? Yeah, I was alone. I, um, I came to the place by myself. I came there to meet my artist, which was already in the, the establishment when I got there. And, uh, you know, we had to support 50, you know. Um, and, of course, my man, you know, JQ, you know what I'm saying, everything that he does with Branson or anything with 50, you know, I, I support it. Mm -hmm. So I'm there to just, you know, show support like normal, not expecting nothing, you know, not having any recent altercations with anybody that would warrant something like that to happen. So I wasn't expecting anything like that, anything of that sort to go on. Now you said you were lured into an ambush. Mm -hmm. Who lured you? Do uh, you know the people? Oh, of course I know. Yes, yeah, trade the truth. Yeah, he asked me to after I was finished doing what I was doing with a fan, mm -hmm. to come and, come and speak to him. So I went over there with the intentions of speaking. And speech is not what went on. Like, that's not what took place, speech. So it was a lot of, like I say, I was sucker punched. And, and then I was jumped after the sucker punch. So that's basically what happened. Do you recall, because what we see in the video is limited, right. but do you recall Trey actually putting his hands on you? That's the only person that I did see put their hands on me. I don't walk around this city with fear of nobody doing anything to me, because I don't have a reason to. But what I did see was when I walked up to him to conversate, you know, he swung. And I guess the effects of that go a lot further than onlookers would know. Like, um, it was real disrespectful. And I think it was meant to be disrespectful, but I don't think it's really falling down the path of too much disrespect on my end right now. Mm -hmm. But I think that was the intention. Now, the video that we see we see someone else attacking you, not trade the truth. Right. So what is that we're seeing in that video? What you're seeing when this video comes on is after everybody that you could see in the background, because I think everybody that was in the background when the video comes on were the people that were assaulting me. Mm -hmm. So uh, when the video comes on, this is his little brother, Jayton. He is, he's standing over me. I'm in the, I'm in a fetal position. Like, okay, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let y'all finish doing what y'all doing, and then I'm going to stand up on my feet. And then when I stand up on my feet, all right, cool. You know, let's take it from here. Mm -hmm. So what you see is the video turning on after the jump is concluded, and he comes back to still do whatever he's doing. And once I realize it's over, I stand on my feet and he is the first person I see. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'm gonna go with him. And then of course, everybody else is around. I go with him and as you can see from the video, it looked like three of the, uh, three of the guys that are there, they're ready to jump me again. So that's what you're looking at. And in total, how many people attacked you when you came out of the restaurant? Uh, well, like I say, 
the only thing that I saw was the one punch. When I got hit with the one, that, with the one sucker punch, it's like, okay, now I got to go down because I don't know what the fuck is going on. Mm -hmm. And um, so when I come from doing this, all I see is people moving back as I'm standing up. So I can't tell you if it was one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, but, I, but when I'm like this, unless there's a man with five or six hands, which I don't believe there is, mm -hmm. uh, this was an attack by all of these people. And then I hear everybody in the background like, ah, oh, that's messed up. Y'all gotta jump him, like, why well, y'all can't do this one-on-one? -on -one. So I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm cool. You know when you're getting jumped. Right. Because, like, as I said, there's no six-handed man. So uh, I can't tell you exactly who it was, but in my opinion, everybody in the video, you know what I'm saying, is a culprit of this. So why not, and I already know the answer to this, but why not go to law enforcement? Why not go to police and demand that charges are filed? Well, I mean, my job description would suggest that if I do that, that I'm not keeping it street. Mm -hmm. So what a lot of people on the streets would want to see is street justice. Mm -hmm. And as I said on a previous in interview, I'm trying to take the place of being a man rather than being the regular way that they look at us. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand why we are looked at in the fashion that we are looked at. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know why we are called animals, and I don't want to feed into that. I don't want to be animalistic because I'm a man. So trying to, you know, show some resolve. And uh, Could you walk away from all of this right now and just move on with your life? No. I mean, could you? I mean, because think about, I'm okay, but my children been calling me ever since Saturday and I can't even answer the phone. <laughs> what am I gonna say? You know, my kids gotta look at this for the rest of their life online. Could you walk away from that? Knowing your daughter calling you crying. I got grown men calling me crying. And it's a real, it's a real delicate situation <laughs> to where you know these people don't give a damn about you. And you know it's, a, it's an attack on your character. They're trying to make you look bad. They're trying to wash you up. Basically, they're trying to, you know, trying to tear you down, blow your character away. I don't think it's working, but this is the attempt. So knowing all these type of things, knowing that you don't care, first of all, first and foremost, you don't care nothing about my health, my safety. Number two, you don't care about how you making me look in the public just because you hate me for whatever reason that you hate me for. Like you're, you're dealing with the most, I don't know, it's, it's the most pitiful situation that one can deal with. So it's kind of like, nah, you can't walk away from nothing like that. Because, I mean, if you do, I got to say you a sucker. You can't walk away from nothing like that. I ain't saying you got to go buy every Uzi in town with the intent of using it. But it's just not a walking away from situation. Like, that's too, that's the ultimate disrespect. Mm -hmm. I'm almost afraid to ask you, you know, how do you address this? How are you going to deal with this? Well, how I'm going to deal with it? is a question that I, I have yet to answer, have an answer to mm -hmm. because I got people that's, hey man, you know what it is. And then I got people that's like, hey man, I'm proud of you for, for manning up and not doing what you would usually do. So you, you're basically caught in between your thought process. Right now, at the moment, I'm trying to stay busy, uh, definitely um, are not going to be idle to my thoughts. 
I'm trying not to have them. So, you know, I'm staying busy. I'm still recording. I'm still working. But if I take these shades off, I think you could tell me, oh, no, nah, I know how you're going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know, the... I can't be upset about it because I'm from the streets and jumping people ain't no street thing unless somebody raped somebody in your family, you know, killed one of your loved ones or, you know, tried to kidnap your child or something. Yeah, I think the whole community going, you know, put all their feet in the, in the proper crevices. Mm -hmm. But for just outrage, hate, jealousy, envy, whatever it is. Like, nah, like, I, I can't tell you what the real thoughts are because I'm definitely not gonna incriminate myself. I don't wanna sound like a criminal and I don't wanna sound like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Right now I'm just, I'm breathing and I'm existing in my own lane. Uh, only thing I'm definite about is whatever was trying to be done with my character, I think it failed horribly. When you had a chance to lay eyes on that video, I think that came out for the first time Monday, mm -hmm. looking at yourself and what's going on in that video, what went through your mind? What went through my mind was... And can you still look at that video now? Yeah, I can still look at it. I can still look at it because me knowing what happened makes me comfortable to look at it. It makes me take the place of, well, you know, I must be a bad son of a gun if it take all y'all. And with the people that are looking at the video from that point on, looking at the guy standing over me, you know, being stupid, I guess, oh, this little guy got him on the ground like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really have to be, I mean, a line I made famous on your show, your cheese has to slide off your omelet. If you think that this person got me in this position. Mm -hmm. But as a man and as a person that, that does box and do all these type of things, what I'm seeing is, Okay, I'm really seeing respect of another kind. Because if you don't have a real issue with somebody and you got to jump them, either you really scared of them or you really just trying to assassinate them because they represent something that you just cannot, either you can't stand or you can't beat. I don't know what it is. That would be a question for, I guess, all those who took place in that. But I, looked at, I look at it as, hey man, don't nobody want to give me no one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm not looking for the fight, mm -hmm. but I mean, if you're going to bring a fight to me, like you're going to bring the whole team. And I mean, and to be honest, there's not a thing I can tell you about that would warrant something like that. Mm -hmm. So me looking at it, I'm like, yeah, and like all my homeboys and family members and many of the thousands that are upset about this thing, they all saying the same thing. Like, yeah, man, you can basically see when he got up on his feet, you know, it wasn't, it was a lot of backpedaling. And so I see it as, yeah, I must, I must be a bad son of a gun, Jack, if it take all that. What is, if there is any, beef between you and Trey? Me and Trey don't have no beef. We don't have no beef. Uh, I'll probably end things with us a little immaturely by not saying I was leaving. But the way I do things. The group. Yeah, yeah, the group. Uh, I guess maybe a decade ago, a little over a decade ago, man, when the energy I feel isn't authentic, I got to move around. I don't need to make no song about you. I don't need to go and tell somebody this about you or tell somebody that about you. I'm just going to wake up and unmeet you in my mind. I don't know you anymore. Mm -hmm. 
and that's the approach that I took. And even as a, a guy in my in my 40s, it's, it's the same approach. I don't owe anybody a conversation. So it's like, if I feel things are going in the wrong direction, or if I feel like I'm being used, or whatever the case may be, I'm not gonna be a commodity for anybody. I, I, I need to be able to be a person first. But I mean, if you're looking at me like I'm just a commodity, well, you know, let me do that to myself. Let me pimp myself. I'm not gonna let nobody pimp me. So I just parted ways. And that's basically it. I mean, me and him have no beef, none at all. None at all. Not a guy standing over me. He tried to make some beef out of something, but it's no validity to that either. Mm -hmm. and, and for the average viewer who's watching, they're saying, well, if you guys didn't have any beef and you're saying he lured you out mm -hmm. and sucker punched you, why would he do that if there's no beef or hard feelings? Or am I wrong in including hard feelings? Well, I think hard feelings might be there. And I mean, and if it's a case of hard feelings, them some hard ass feelings. <laughs> them some hard ass feelings. Uh, But I will say this, because I was telling somebody earlier, if your little brother have a problem with me, if I had a little brother and they were saying something like somebody did something to me or somebody did something by me that wasn't stand up or correct, I would probably look upon it in the same way. The only thing that I would do is I'm gonna find out if it's any truth to this. Like, you can't just run in my house and be like, Ro, come quick, come quick. You know, this is what happened. I'm going to really find out if this is what happened. Because you ain't going to get me out of my bed and jump in the car with you to come fight a bunch of people that you just tried to rob and they caught you. Mm -hmm. And now they on your ass. And you want to come get me to, like, Help me save some of my ass. No, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm be like, hey man, what happened? Hey, he did this, oh, that's what you did? Y'all pardon me. I'm gonna deal with him. And after I deal with him, then I'm gonna have to deal with y'all because I'm not gonna let y'all do this. But I need to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the thing between me and him, this comes from a case we caught way back in 2005. And case is a public record, I will say that first and foremost. Like, I have an awesome lawyer, you know what I'm saying? And uh, these cases are public record. So something was said about a case that was totally untrue, but it's been dragged out over time as if it's the truth. I've never, I've never said anything about it because everybody with common sense knows better. So it's nothing to have a response to. But I guess to them, this was their response to it. When you saw that this video made it on social media and the response from some of the people out there, how do you deal with that? Hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of people know you mm -hmm. and they see this video and you realize they only see that aspect of the video. How have you deal with what you've heard, what you've seen on social media? I mean, I don't because I don't live on social media. I live in the world. And I know social media is where broke people are millionaires, where suckers are real, you know, and where ug ugly people can turn themselves what, why, I'm sorry, they took, they took away the filters. So if you're ugly, you just gotta be ugly. But, but they had it at first where, you know, you can get on there with no teeth on the bottom and all of a sudden you got a grill. Like, it's, it's, it's a fake world. That's why everybody is there. Because you can, you know, you can wake up, you know. I mean, it's people do it all the time. They drive up outside of my house, take a photo like, yeah, just chilling at the crib. You know, that's what people do. So, I mean, I'm not worried about uh, an intangible world. Like, you can't put your hands on Instagram. 
can't put your hands on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, but what's real is, you know, what happened to me. That's real. Mm-hmm. And the whole thing is real. And it was people out there to, to see that it was for real. So, I mean, I don't mind because I see a lot of the, the, the fun poking and I see a lot of the, you know, well, I, well I'm a, let, me, let, me, let me dial back. I don't see a lot of that. The most thing I see is support. I've seen a couple of little things, but for the most part, I see people like, oh, no, nah, man, we saw that you got jumped, and then we saw that you got on your feet, and you was ready to, you know, do whatever with whoever. So, and the most, the most common thing that I'm seeing from people on social media is people saying that, oh, man, they weak for that. <laughs> they weak for that. So... It don't make me feel no type of way to look at this on social media and feel like, oh man, woe is me. Uh, oh, it's over now. Like, nah, nah, I don't, it's, it's another day at One Deep Entertainment for me. I've dealt with worse things than this. I've been on the other side of things of this nature. And I mean, I am a soldier at the end of the day, so I'm not gonna complain about any wars that I have to fight if I'm gonna say that I'm a soldier. So, I mean, it's legal. And at this point, it's legal and it's it's, it's political. Mm -hmm. So, I'm just playing the politics. Why was it important for you to tell your side of the story? Well, it wouldn't have been important for me to tell my side of the story if the video hadn't came out, Mm -hmm. because I did have a conversation with this man the next day. I haven't talked to this man in 10 years. Haven't haven't really had a need to want to reach out to a person that I know who feels a certain type of way about me. And you're referring to Trey, right? Right, right. Because he said also in the video he talked to you the next day. Yeah, he did. He did. Yeah, actually, I got to credit that to my brother Mike D. I think the city was getting upset. And when I say the city, I'm, I'm not gonna say the whole city, but my age bracket, you know, the, you know, the people in the screwed up clique, some people in the Swisher house, you know, I'm not gonna say names cause I'm not gonna, you know, but it's a lot of people were upset. And it was a lot of people on the phone call. I'm talking to Mike D, cause everybody calling me to, you know, check on me to make sure I'm all right. And he was like, hold on. This guy's calling my phone right now. You want to hang up? You know, you want me to call you back or you want to stay on the phone? No, I want to stay on the phone. So he clicks over. They're arguing about what's going on. And then all I'm going to say about is when the conversation started, I heard a false narrative. So, you know, I'm like, ah, no, I got to say something now. Because obviously he didn't know I was on the phone. So when I came on to the phone, the conversation changed a little bit. And I'm like, man, and I'm gonna tell you the one thing that kind of hurt my feelings about the conversation. Cause we did get to a point in the conversation about an hour and a half down mm-hmm. uh, to where we were laughing. And I'm laughing with injuries, but I mean, I'm just, he told me and Mike D, man, you know what? I can't even tell you what I'm, it, it was so long ago, I don't even know what I'm mad at Zero for. That's the only thing that hurt me about the conversation. Mm-hmm. You're gonna sit here and say, you don't even remember why you mad. So you did all this here and had all this here done from a memory lapse. You know, you you put me out here like this here, but you don't know why. And like I said, so I can't tell my daughters, hey, uh, I know y'all saw what happened, but it's not known why it happened. So wherever they go now, it's like like it's deeper than, you know, it's deeper than what everybody would know that it is Mm -hmm. and 
I feel like I know why, you know, certain stuff is going on. But to hear that he didn't know why, it was like, yeah, that was one, you know, that was one that hit me here. Like, that's real, pure, unadulterated hate then. Do you think you guys could ever reconcile? No. No like, chance whatsoever? Not, not here or the next life. Like, why would I? And I mean, I'm just being honest, like, you know, I get all of the people calling me with the, hey man, be the bigger man. I think I am being the bigger man, because I'm not, you know, obviously, there's been no retaliation. It's been no nothing. It's just been me sitting back like, well, the thoughts that I was having throughout the years that were tentative about this guy, oh, they're definitely solidified now. Man, do this dude really hate me for real? Do this dude really hate me for real? Yeah, he hate me. And even worse than him hating me, you got a bunch of people that don't know me, you program hate into them. Because the people that's jumping me, I don't, I don't know y'all from Adam and Eve. You know what I'm saying? They never did nothing to y'all, don't even know y'all names. So you're not only hating me, but you're programming hating the other people that don't even know me. And I mean, that's some pure hate. That's some pure hate. And I had to tell him on the phone, like, he was like, man, at the end of the day, man, we family, and I never let nobody do nothing to family. I was like, yeah, except for last night, huh? Like, if this is family, if this is family, I need to take my enemies out for a drink. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like, reconcile for what? Because as soon as I stand next to him in public, uh, my people gonna look down on me. Right. Even if I wanna stand next to him in public, like what you did, you've limited the way I can forgive you. You feel me? I don't want, I got fans out there that's gonna stand with me no matter what because they know I'm solid. But I don't think I have too much fandom left if I hold up on high somebody who brought me down and kicked me while I was down. So I got a career to think about. More importantly, I got a life to, to think about. And I don't want to put myself next to anybody that I know or I think is harboring ill will for me. Because I mean, this, this, is not the only, this is not the only time something like this was about to go down. And for, and for record, you can go back and listen to all my records you can go back and listen to anything. Like the last thing I said about this man was on Muhammad Ali album two years ago. And I was like, they want that ABN back, me and Trey the Truth. Well, if you're waiting on that, keep waiting for not a diss, it's the truth. That, 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 that line works for him and myself because when people ask me about him and try to force him upon me on my page, of course I'm gonna block and delete. I don't wanna hear that. Mm -hmm. They force me to him, he blocks and delete as well because he don't wanna hear that either. So I'm like, hey man, look, y'all need to stop waiting on an ABN reunion because I'm not in that. So if they gonna do an ABN reunion, I'm not gonna be a part of it. Y'all need to let that go. Support this man and what he does solo. Support me and what I do solo. That's it. And then the next time I said the man's name, it was on Donnie Houston podcast. And I was like, basically, man, I missed the guy. And this is the last public thing I said about him until this time. This is time number three. So it's like I say, man, you know when a person don't give a damn about you, why would you reconcile? I mean, it's cool to just, you know what? I made it through what you put me through. Is that not enough? Is that not enough that you don't have to walk out of any restaurant that you like to frequent and me and my people outside waiting on you? That ain't happened. I don't know, I mean, the streets are talking and as you can see from where we are right now, I'm not nowhere close to the streets. So, I don't know nothing about that. All I know is 
the reconcile, like, I don't even know how to do that with something of this magnitude, like, because I know I'm a good dude, and I know it's a lot of stuff. I'm not perfect, and I know, and everybody know, oh, yeah, I can be a jerk, and I try to be one. When, when somebody's disrespecting me, oh, I'm going to be a jerk, and I don't have to disrespect you back. Me being a jerk might be just, you know what, pardon my back forever. You know, pardon my back forever. Because me leaving your presence is going to hurt you way more than me sticking around and arguing with you. I know what I bring to the table. So I've never learned how to forgive somebody for something of this magnitude. And I don't want to learn how. How do you see all of this ending? It ain't never going to end. It ain't never going in, and I ain't mean to go hood on you. It ain't never going in, but I mean, it's not. I mean, how can it? I mean, well, put it like this. Is the internet ever going in? No. So, that means every time somebody feels like it, they're going to post a video. And how that's going to look. I go and take a picture with him, like, yeah, man, you know, we talked and we made up. Let's take a picture together. You know what the comments going to say. How could you take a picture with him? I thought you was real. You're going to let them walk on you like that and you're going to forgive them and you're going to hand in hand them? Like, and I'm going to be honest with you. If that video wouldn't have never came out, I'll be honest with you. He was trying to meet me to give me back my bracelet and my watch that fell off during the fight. Mm -hmm. And he was like, man, I can bring my brother. We can sit up here. We can talk about it. We can do this and we can do that. And I'm like, talking ain't what's on my mind. And at that point in time, I'm like, I don't even want the bracelet. I don't even want the watch. It's something else that I want. And like I said, we talked on this phone for hours without nobody knowing. You know, he was saying like, yeah, I'm trying to track the footage down and, and, and I'm listening to it. Like, it's funny listening to a person that set up a situation saying that he's about to, let me try to undo the situation. You know, you can't undo all this stuff in the back of my head. You can't undo these busted blood vessels in my eye, all the swelling that was over here from the sucker punch. Funnily, I don't even know if funnily is a word. I might have just made that up. <laughs> but funnily, though, uh, my pride ain't even hurt that bad. Because usually in a situation like this, like, oh, man, you got, my pride would have been messed up if I would have had a one-on-one -on -one fight with somebody and, and, yeah, that's cool. You know, I don't even see Jackie Chan and them fighting five, six, seven people, three, four people. Like, so I'm, my pride ain't, it's, it, it's, it's physical, you know, it's physical. So it's like the whole conversation like, it just, it took the man so long to say an apology. Like, I just had to think about it. Like, man, like, nah, this, this man don't give a damn about me. You know you're not giving a damn about from these type of actions being taken against you. But I don't know. It just, it wasn't authentic to me. But to be honest, like I said, if the, if the footage would have never came out, the next thing you probably would have seen, you know what, I'm not going to say probably. The next thing you, you most definitely would have seen, you was my number on your phone. Isaiah, man, come do a, come pull up on me and Trey right quick. You know I'm not going to call nobody else in the city. You know what I'm saying? You know I'm going to only call you. But I would have called you like, pull up on us. And 
let's dispel these rumors. I would have came out as, and nah, it was a rumor. But when the footage came out, obviously I can't take that position because I'm not going to let this attempt on my character assassination, I'm not going to let it be carried out. So I got to make decisions as a boss of One Deep Entertainment. I also have to make decisions as a man that put on his pants one leg at a time like everybody else, like, like everybody else. Everybody else I know that's a man, you know. Uh, so taking a higher road, I wasn't gonna say nothing about it. But now it's like you gotta say something. So I mean, that's just where I'm at with it. It's a messed up situation because it's somebody I, you know, I, I met. I met Trey in 1996. And basically, all the way up until, I mean, we had little beefs before over nothing. But basically, that last beef that we had, well, I'm not going to even say a beef. When we separated, it just, it wasn't no beef when we separated. And I ain't never said his name on nothing publicly in a bad light. So I'm thinking, like, you really upset? Like, you really this upset because I'm not rapping with you or I'm not being down with you know, with this ABN thing no more. Like, like you like you taking that hard. Like, why you taking that so hard? Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, obviously he took it hard. And that's, just, like I said, this is, this is hard as hell right here. So, I wouldn't want to reconcile. It was cool to talk to him. I will say it was cool to talk to him on the phone. Mm -hmm. And he did say on the phone call, like, man, we really should have had this conversation before this. I'm like, yeah, because I mean, this is, this is the natural end of anything positive for me and you, you know? And I don't know. I did, uh, I did proposition him through other people. Like, yeah, man, if you have a problem, you know, let's do it for the good cause. Let's, let's you know, my mama died of lupus. So I was like, man, look, let's do it for charity. One-on-one, -on -one, private, or, or let's get a bag for it. And, you know, do a real celebrity. I mean, cause I mean, that's what's, that's what's, that's what's cracking now. Like celebrity boxing matches, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, this way, you ain't never got to say nothing about me ever again. We get in the ring do what we do, and after that, you don't have to say nothing about me no more. It's just, it's done. You know, you donate your piece to whoever, I donate mine to Lupus, and uh, other than that, I go back to promoting my album, Pressure, Message, you know what I'm saying? I had to get my promo in right quick. <laughs> Roll One Deep video right now. It's, you know, and speaking of Rolling One Deep, yeah, I was Rolling One Deep when this happened. And I'm not about to start walking outside rolling 50 deep because this happened. I'm still gonna be me. Uh, only difference is, uh, well, it ain't gonna be no difference. I'm not gonna do nothing different. I actually thought a guy that I said publicly, you know, I, I, I kind of miss this cat, man. Cause we, you know, I missed when we struggled together. It, it's again, like when we both start getting money, mm -hmm. when we both start getting money, it's like, you got to fall back into your own kingdom now. You got to deal with your own constituents. So it's like you over here with ABN, which I left to go create one deep. And I got to handle my people. You got to handle your people. You got to take care of your people. I got to take care of my people. So I knew we couldn't be like how we was coming up. Right. Probably like this and like, hey, you good? Yeah, I'm good. So the growing apart, I mean, that's just what blades of grass do some go up straight some do this here you know what i'm saying but the phone work hey let's hook up let's do this let's let's do that like whatever the case may be but i just it just it just i don't know it just threw me for a loop to see that that it ain't no real beef and you really instilled in people that 
that there is a beef. Mm -hmm. Ain't no beef. I ain't never said nothing publicly about you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It's just a crazy situation, but I definitely learned a valuable lesson from it. And it's a lesson that I've been teaching for years. But I mean, I just, my whole thing now is I'm not, I don't want to talk to nobody no more. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I ain't come talk to me. I might have to just slap everybody now. So I, I'm probably going to have some type of PTSD. Hey, man, let's squash our beef. Nah, don't tell me that. Last person told me that. I end up on the internet, mm -hmm. jumped. So I'm definitely going to be different in another right, but more of the same in another right, too.